element terms. One of the biggest learning curves I had when I first started in tech sales was getting caught up to speed with all of the industry lingo and understanding the acronyms. We wanted to save you guys the trouble by compiling a list of all of the terms you need to know so that when you are in your interview with the recruiter or hiring manager, you sound like you're already in the industry and it will help you get caught up to speed faster. Let's begin. All of the words that you understand, that's great. The ones that you don't quite understand, get out a piece of paper, a note card, write down the term, write down the definition and an example so that you can start to work it into your normal vocabulary. Accounts. An account contains all of the records of customer interactions, including contact information, preferred services, and transactions with your business. An account is created after the first time a customer buys from your business. So as we talked about earlier, an ideal customer profile, you identify a company you want to work with, you cold call them, you sell them a license to your product, and all of a sudden that company becomes an actual account that you begin tracking over time. An account executive, AE, closer. This is the role I'm in right now. An account executive is a sales team member in charge of closing deals by converting qualified leads into paying customers. You as the sales development rep, you will be setting up meetings and you will bring in your account executive who is the closer to actually work the sales cycle and meet with the customer. An account manager, you'll see AM as an abbreviation, farmer, a sales team member in charge of managing and upselling existing clients and accounts. An account manager isn't responsible for finding new customers. They're tasked with retaining and expanding upon the spend of existing customers. So think about a farmer, an account manager, you're working with an existing patch of vegetables, whereas a closer is a hunter, somebody that's going out into the jungle to go and find new logos. Annual recurring revenue, ARR, the amount of money a customer pays you every year on a subscription model. This is what makes software sales so lucrative because if I sell you a $1,000 annual recurring revenue license, you'll spend a thousand this year and you'll spend a thousand if not more next year. It's recurring revenue. Think of it as a subscription, like your Netflix. Each month you have to pay. Or in the case of most B2B companies, it's an annual subscription, annual recurring revenue. Annual contract value, ACV. The annual contract value is the average annualized revenue per customer contract. ACV is usually compared against customer lifetime value to see how long it takes to pay back the cost of acquiring a customer. If I have to pay $10 in advertising and I sell you a new contract that cost that you pay me $5, the annual contract value is $5. And we can say, okay, it's going to take me two years of that contract to eventually pay back the cost it took to acquire you. So it's really important to understand how much is the customer actually paying you year over year. Account-based selling. Account-based selling is a strategy where the entire company coordinates to pursue high value accounts. The departments that are most typically involved in account-based selling are sales, marketing, customer success. I typically coordinate with marketing folks on my most important accounts to send out gifts like books or invites to webinars to my highest potential accounts because it's a creative way to ultimately get the attention of the executives that you wanna meet with. Business Development Representative, also known as Sales Development Representative, SDR. This representative is a sales specialist focused on finding new prospects, establishing foundational relationships, and updating the sales pipeline with new leads. You guys will hear us use sales development representative, technology sales, business development representative interchangeably. They all essentially mean the same thing. You are a business development, a sales development representative, and you are focused with calling, emailing, reaching out to prospects, your buyer persona, within your ideal customer profiles to establish new relationships and set up meetings so that you can begin to generate sales pipeline. Business to business, B2B. This is business selling to business. So this is an example of Salesforce, a leading software company, selling their CRM, customer relationship management software, to another company. Business to consumer, B2C, selling business to consumer. So Netflix. 
Netflix sells their subscription product to you and I, consumers. Amazon is another example of B2C as it relates to the retail business. Business unit. A group of people representing a specific department or product within a company, such as accounting or manufacturing. Think about a business unit basically as a department. So you have human resources, you have sales, you have marketing, IT, different units within a company. Buyer persona. You guys should know this one. A buyer persona is a representation of the ideal customer for your business. Companies create buyer personas based on market research and data about existing customers. Having a buyer persona in mind is important for marketers creating a target audience and for sales representatives qualifying leads. The better you understand who your buyer persona is, the better you'll able you'll be able to understand the unique problems they have and articulate the value your solution can have in solving their problems. So for example, course careers. Our buyer persona is somebody that's ambitious, that wants to get in tech sales, that may not have a degree, background, or experience. So we understand some of the unique challenges you face trying to get in the door. So we have created this course to help you overcome all of those obstacles to get hired in tech sales. Buying signal. A buying signal is a verbal or nonverbal cue that shows a customer is ready to make a purchase, such as signing up for a free trial, asking about contract specifics. Picking up on these signals can help sales reps better focus their attention on customers that are giving off more buying signals. So buying signal is basically somebody showing interest. They're not always going to say, I am interested in your product. They'll show it directly or indirectly. So you as a salesperson need to use different communication strategies and tactics to truly and ask questions to understand what they want so that you can give them what they need. C-level, C-suite. Highest level executives, C stands for chief, like chief executive officer. In the earlier section, organizational structure, we showed how C-levels are at the top of an organization and have the most decision-making power. Champion. A prospect within a company that wants to purchase your product or service and is willing to do everything they can to help convince the others within their company to make a purchase. As a sales rep, I rely on my champions to do internal selling for me because the challenge with B2B sales is you are not going to necessarily close them on the phone. You are going to give them a presentation, build a business case, and that contact that you're working with, ideally your champion, is going to have to then sell to their internal stakeholders and make a decision when you're not even in the room. And that's why software sales is so lucrative because it's complex. It has massive upside, but it requires you being able to build champions that will advocate for you. Channel partner, a person or company that offers services or products on behalf of another company. So think about this as, as different partners. So we have partners that after I sell a customer and, and they buy my product, I will have a partner that then implements my product. And perhaps that partner can help sell additional products of mine to that company working with them ongoing. Channel sales. Focusing on different sales channels, such as in-house sales, team, retailers, referrals, dealers. So think about this as just different ways companies acquire customers. So one channel could be with sales reps like you and I. Another channel could be YouTube advertising, another channel could be putting up a billboard, different channels to attract attention. Churn, the percentage of clients that leave or stop using your products, your services or products within a certain period of time. So basically you buy my product and then you end our relationship and decide not to renew the next year. You churn. Closing ratio, a closing ratio is the number of deals closed compared to the number of engaged prospects. This ratio can be used to evaluate the performance of an individual sales rep in forecast sales. So imagine if I work 10 deals, I close five of those deals, I win five of those deals, I have a 50% closing ratio. The more efficient you are at closing, the more valuable you are going to be to the company and the better you're going to perform as a sales rep. Clients. Closed opportunities, paying clients, and people that your account manager should take care of. So I reach out to a company, they buy, they're an actual account, and we consider them a client because they're a paying customer. Closers. Coffee is for closers. We all want to be closers and we're going to get there. 
Closers or account executives, they're focused on closing deals and they only prospect a small number of strategic accounts. The higher you move up in your sales career, the less accounts you'll have because they'll be more strategic in companies that can spend more money. When you are just starting in your career, you'll probably work with a larger amount of accounts, companies that have less revenue, and that's really how you start getting your experience working deals and closing. Cold call. You guys, make sure to stick around for the cold calling section coming up. I've made over 60,000 cold outbound calls, and um, I think you guys are really going to like that section because you're going to be doing a lot of cold calling as a sales development rep. An attempt to engage with the prospect that you don't yet have an established relationship with on a call. So you're interrupting someone's day, you're calling them out of the blue. You guys are going to love that section. Um, There's a lot of, it's an art and a science. Cold email. An attempt to engage with prospects via email, sending them a sales proposal to someone that you don't yet have a relationship with. So this is basically me emailing you saying, hey, buy my product. Customer acquisition cost. The cost of acquiring new paying clients. So this is pretty self-explanatory. If it takes me $10 to in advertising to attract a new customer, my customer acquisition cost, CAC, is $10. Customer lifetime value, CLV also known as lifetime value, LTV, the total lifetime value of one client in terms of the revenue they'll bring before churn. So earlier we talked about um, churn and we talked about total contract value, annual recurring revenue in the annual contract value. If you spend $10 year one and you spend $10 year two and then you spend $10 year three and then you decide to stop your license, you've spent 30 total dollars. So your customer lifetime value is $30 and you take all the customers and figure out what is the total value. So you can start to run your business more effectively. Customer relationship management, CRM, a software or internet based service that helps business owners and sales professionals manage their sales pipeline, track prospects and related activities throughout the sales cycle. An example of a CRM is Salesforce And we'll show an example later in the course, we'll screen share, but it's basically what you use the computer program to manage all of your activities, your tasks, all the accounts you're working into and manage everything you do day to day. Customer success, a strategy and a proactive mindset that helps reduce churn rates, increase customer satisfaction with a client product and the predictability of recurring revenue. So customer success is a strategy and it's typically a department or a business unit in and of itself. It's folks, I think of account managers as customer success. They are working with existing clients, making sure they're happy, they're satisfied, they have everything they need to be successful. Decision maker, the person in charge of making making the purchasing decision at a company. So you are the decision maker to invest in yourself for course careers. So the people you're selling into with these companies are the decision maker to decide to buy your product or not. Fortune 500, a list of the 500 largest companies in the US based on revenue. So if you're prospecting into Fortune 500 companies, large complex deals, and this is typically what we would consider enterprise sales, selling into Fortune 500 companies. Gatekeeper. I'm sure you guys have heard some scary stories about Gatekeeper. The person who answers the corporate phone and decides to let you talk to the decision maker or not. So think of the gatekeeper as a secretary or a personal assistant. I'll share some strategies in the cold calling section how to get past the gatekeeper, but it's all about sending an email to the decision maker and being nice to the gatekeeper and really saying, hey, I don't expect you to send me through right now, but let Susie know I sent her an email. And that's all you should ask for. ICP, this should sound familiar. Ideal customer profile is a profile of the ideal client for your business. So basically the person who could most stands to benefit from your product. Inbound. Interest that comes in, received cold calls, submitted forms. So as a sales development representative, most companies have an outbound and an inbound function. If you are on the inbound function, you are only calling warm leads all day. So your company will pay for marketing or have a website and folks will naturally request to be contacted and you as an inbound rep will reach out to these folks who are interested in speaking. Inbound sales, sales that happen as a result of customers directly approaching and engaging with the brand company. So once again, folks that reach out wanting to be spoken to. Lead, 
We want a lot of leads, guys. Someone who is a potential fit to purchase your product or service. So you could you might hear hot leads or leads and say, we got to go find more leads. Basically, people who stand to benefit from your product. Lead generation. All of the activities that have a goal to generate interest around a product or a service through different methods. Content marketing, PPC, referrals, outbound marketing, partnerships. So this is basically different ways to generate leads. I could run a campaign on LinkedIn. I could make a post and all of a sudden people start saying, yeah, I want to speak. Or I could do a webinar and folks show up and then I try and sell them afterwards. I could write a book and start to find leads to that way. So there's different ways to acquire leads. Lead nurturing, engaging and building a long-term relationship with existing prospects. So this is basically just adding value. The more you can build the relationship, the more you're going to be able to ask for in the future. Lead qualification. And guys, we're about halfway through the list. So stay engaged, keep focusing, take your notes. If you need to pause and take a quick bathroom break, take a drink of water. I'm going to take a drink of water now. We're feeling refreshed and let's keep going. Lead qualification, a process of qualifying if a lead is a good fit to purchase your product or service. So this is basically, you're doing some discovery, you're understanding, are they qualified to buy? Do they have a budget? Do they have a timeline? Why would they buy now? Lead scoring, assigning a value to every lead based on predefined criteria in order to rank leads in terms of engaging priority. So you could think of this as warm leads. So folks who are more qualified to buy versus less qualified to buy. Influencer, someone who has a strong influence over the purchase of a product or service, but isn't the final decision maker. When you're calling into accounts, this may be the person you have to start with and you have to influence them because they're gonna influence other people in the account that actually can make the purchase decision. Marketing qualified lead, MQL. A lead that will most likely become a paying client based on what pages the lead visited, what actions they took on the company's website, and other online engagement. So this is basically just another way of qualifying a lead and scoring and saying, hey, we qualify them because they meet a certain criteria. Maybe they've watched the webinar for at least 50% and we deem that to be a qualified lead. Monthly recurring revenue, MRR. The amount of regular and predictable income a company expects to receive every month. Earlier, we talked about annual recurring revenue. Monthly recurring revenue is just a different way of selling. Rather than making someone commit to a year, you're just making them commit to a month. Netflix is an example of monthly recurring revenue. Onboarding. A set of actions or a process of introducing a new client with a service or product, setting up an account and introducing the client with their point of contact at the company. So you buy my product and I have to then onboard you with the product. So some of these technologies you sell may be complex and require implementations that take months to actually fully set up. Opportunities, this is what it's all about. A qualified lead that is a good fit for your solution. An SDR, sales development representative, has qualified this person as someone who has the need and ability to purchase. As a sales development rep, my quota was opportunities per month. So I needed to set up meetings. And if that meeting was a good meeting and we decided to continue speaking with them because we thought they were a good fit, that's considered an opportunity. Outbound sales. This is where the majority of you guys will probably start in your SDR career. You will be cold calling, cold emailing, social selling with the goal of initiating contact with a prospective client and ultimately closing the deal. You are reaching out to folks. You are purely outbound. And this is a hunter. Point of contact. This is something you'll hear all the time. A person or a department within a company that the client can reach out to with questions or specific requests. So you as the rep will be the point of contact between your company and the client you're working with. Profit margin. Profit margin is a ratio of profitability that reveals how much money a company actually makes. It is the amount by which revenue from sales exceeds cost. To calculate profit margin, divide your gross profit, revenue cost of goods sold by revenue. So think of this basically as you pay me $10 for my product. It cost me $2 to make my product. My profit margin is $8. The higher the margin, the better the business. And this is why software is so lucrative. 
Prospects, a list of names and contact information in some type of list, database, CRM. Your prospects are all of the contacts that you are reaching out to day in and day out trying to set up meetings with to qualify into opportunities. Referral, method of generating new sales leads where someone refers a potential client to you. So let's say you have a really great experience with course careers. You then refer a friend who's also looking to get in tech sales and you say, hey, go check out course careers something we really appreciate. And we absolutely want to make sure people have a great experience so that they refer others. And that's ultimately good business. Return on investment, ROI, shows the effectiveness of the initial investment. It is a ratio between net profit and the cost of investment. When you are selling deals, the company is going to say, okay, you are charging me $100,000 for this product. Why should I buy it? And you got to be able to say, well, the return you're going to see, you're going to save $500,000 through automation. It's going to save your team time and save money. That's a return on investment. Revenue, the amount of money one business generates in a specific period of time, a quarter, a year. So think of this as money coming in. A business is an entity that has revenue, money coming in. SaaS, an acronym for software as a service. If you work in tech sales, you can sell different types of technology, but the most common and the most popular, what I do and what I recommend is SaaS. You're selling software. Sales acceleration, speeding up the sales process using different tools and technologies to boost productivity and efficiency. So sales acceleration, we'll have a section later in this course talking about sales tech, but this is using a CRM, customer relationship management, and using tools for auto dialing and finding prospects direct dials, basically making you more efficient. Sales automation, a process of automating sales workflow by using a software or an online tool. It can help simplify, speed up, streamline the sales process. We'll have a section later talking about sales loft. And basically this is a tool that helps you automate making cold calls. Sales cadence. A determined sequence, and this one's really important, guys, so make a, make a star of it. You'll hear this a lot, and it was confusing to me at first. Sales cadence, a determined sequence of sales activities and the frequency at which the sales team interacts with leads. So an example sales cadence is a combination of steps. So if I add you to my sales cadence, I'm going to cold call you on day one. On day three, I'm going to send you a cold email. On day four, I'm going to cold call you. And then I'm going to do that. I'm going to make calls and emails over the course of a predefined number of days. That's a cadence. Sales cycle. Predictable sequences and stages that a company goes through as they sell their product or service. So an example sales cycle for software is the first meeting is just an introductory call. And, and we call it an IQM, an initial qualifying meeting. If it goes well, it progresses into a qualified opportunity. That opportunity, if it advances to the next stage, it will be a discovery call where we ask a lot of questions. If it advantages to the next stage in the sales cycle, it will be a solution presentation. We give a demo. And then the next stage is business consideration and then negotiation. And that's an oversimplified sales cycle for software. Sales demo, an event that serves as a showcase of the product or service that the company is selling. So this could be an example of a demo. You will be screen sharing or sending a video showing how your product actually works. Sales Development Representative, SDR, or SDR. Sales Representative focus on prospecting and finding new sales opportunities. That's what we're all going for here, Sales Development Representative. Sales Enablement, providing sales professionals with necessary tools, technology, training, and other resources in order for them to have better performance at customer engagement. So think of sales enablement basically as people that do sales training on the team. And this is a specific business unit within most companies. Sales funnel, a visual representation of sales processes with defined stages that every potential client goes through as they are led towards a final decision, buying at a product or service. So think of a sales funnel as you visit a website, the next stage of the funnel is you click on the product, the next stage of the funnel is you add it to your cart. The final stage of the funnel is you making the purchasing decision. So that, that's an example of a website, but you as a sales rep, there's different funnels with stages, and this is similar to sales cycle. Sales pipeline, very important. 
a visual representation of a sales process and stages of each individual prospect. So all of the existing opportunities that you're working, so the meetings you set up that progress into more meetings, that's considered pipeline. And in, in, an oversimplified way of thinking about this is if you work at company A and your company A is, is has 500 employees, I know that your company might be able to spend $10,000 with me. So I'm going to add that opportunity value at $10,000. That's what I'm eventually going to try and quote you for the deal. Sales prospecting. A process of finding and identifying new prospective clients using different outbound methods. Cold calling, social selling, advertising. This has an entire section dedicated to it, guys. We're just starting with the basics. But we're going to talk about all of the tricks, best practices, based on what I've learned generating over $10 million in pipeline. I've made a lot of calls, a lot of emails, and there's there's many different strategies to prospecting. And that's primarily how you'll be spending your time as a sales development rep. Sales qualified lead, SQL. A potential client that already met all of the necessary criteria and is forwarded to the account executive to close the deal. So this is basically someone that meets the certain criteria and is able to buy. Scraping data, extraction of large amounts of data from websites. So this is a process of finding direct phone numbers and different data points that help you more effectively prospect. Segmentation, a process of dividing a large market or a contact list into smaller segments based on different criteria, location, company size, revenue. So this is basically categorizing or bucketing ideal customer profiles, for example, and saying, hey, we're going to just target banks. That's the segment we want to focus on today. Social selling, a sales tactic that involves using social media as a sales channel. SDRs engage and create relationships with prospects by probing their needs and providing relevant and valuable insight. So an example of social selling, you go connect with a bunch of your buyer personas on LinkedIn. So you connect with 100 HR leaders and you start posting every day a relevant article talking about just industry best practices and trends, and you're able to gain their attention through social selling. Top of funnel, a term that refers to the top of the sales or marketing funnel where all prospects go through a qualification process, both from inbound and outbound efforts. So top of the funnel is your responsibility as a sales development rep. You are reaching out to prospects, doing the initial qualifying, You might be doing inbound, outbound prospects may be coming to you. You may be going to them. And top of the funnel is generating pipeline and just getting your foot in the door and getting folks that want to speak with you. Unique selling point proposition. Unique features of a business that sets it apart from competitors. So this is basically your differentiators in the market. So we both sell hair dryers. My hair dryer is cordless. Yours is has a cord. My differentiator is it's cordless. That's a unique selling point. The final point here, guys, vertical, a specific segment of the market where a business targets only a specific industry, sector, or niche. So this is very similar to segmentation, but it's just a vertical of, I'm only going to focus on financial service companies. I'm only going to focus on hospitality. Maybe I'm just going to focus on healthcare. This will be dependent on what you're actually selling and who you're selling to. Make sure to go back, review each of these terms. Some of them will be on the final exam. So write down the ones that you do not understand. And the better you understand these words, the more you'll be able to speak, the actual speak, talk the talk so that you can walk the walk and perform and really show off during the interview. Sales development. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching this video on Tech Sale Mindset. That was Trent directly from the course of course careers. I am going to post below this video description Trent's YouTube channel, which has an abundance wealth of knowledge that you can continue to have. So look for his link in the video description directly to his YouTube channel. I will see you guys in the next video. See ya.